Hi everyone. I uh, recently upgraded my mid-2015 iMac to the latest and greatest mid-2020 iMac. Uh, both were 27-inch uh, screen sizes, so it's the big one. And uh, basically I found a different home for my older machine and decided that it was time to uh, upgrade for all of the videos and so on that that I tend to be doing these days. As you can see from this slide, Apple tends to put these things together with a certain number of standard features and then of course you have the option to get things customized. Uh, the only customization I did from the factory was to increase this solid state uh, storage drive from the 512 gigabyte to the one terabyte. As far as the RAM memory, I stayed with the standard 8 gigabyte, and these units still give you the option of yourself increasing the size of the RAM. There's a little door in the back, and I'll show you how that works. And it's so much cheaper to just do that yourself rather than have them do it at the factory. In my case, I added another 32 gigabyte of space, which gave me a total of 40 in the machine, which uh, should take care of everything for quite a while. So let's start off with a uh, couple of seconds showing the unboxing. So as you can see, I've uh, got the new iMac sitting on my desk. And uh, here's where all of our connections are. Over here I've got one for the power supply. That's pretty obvious. The uh, nice thing about having a all-in-one like this is that it really uh, takes away a lot of the clutter that we normally have on our desks. Now let me plug this in. Okay. So as I say, I've got the one power supply cord going on here. Uh, what I'm also going to be using in the back here... Uh, in fact, let me hook them up. I've got a uh, cable that comes in here for uh, Ethernet connecting directly to my router. That's the blue cable that you see there. I've got a um, I've got a label printer also, and uh, that plugs into one of my USB ports back here. Okay. I've also got a laser, a black and white laser printer, so that'll take another port. And then I've got this one cable back here. Uh, basically all it does is it's like an extension, a USB extension. When I have to plug something in temporarily, it brings the cable out in front so I don't have to keep reaching in the back. So I'll do that as well. Now, I have two additional external drives that I'll be using. Let me uh, pull out one of them. Now, this one here is a Lassie 2 terabyte drive, and I'll be plugging that into one of these two uh, USB 3 ports in here. Basically, I've backed up my old computer using Time Machine on this particular drive, so it'll be kind of interesting to see when I start it back up just how effective that time machine uh, capability is at renewing all of my files and bringing everything over for me. So, what I need to do, get out the appropriate cable, and that'll plug into one of these two ports in the back here. So we'll see how that works. I've also got a two terabyte solid state drive that I use for general backups and I'll hook that up later. Okay, wish me luck. Here we go for the uh, initial startup. Let's see what happens here. Well, there's a good sign. I got an apple on the screen. Okay, 
Well, there's where I select my time machine back up. We'll see how that works. Like I say, that time machine is supposed to uh, back up your data uh, periodically, and when you move it to another computer, it'll know what to restore it from. And it looks like the last time it did a backup here, here was August 13th, uh, just a few days ago. And that's when I broke down the old iMac and uh, delivered it to my son's house. Something tells me this is going to take some time. So uh, I'm going to uh, pause for the moment and then I'll come back once it gets to another spot. Okay, it seems like I'm back in operation. I got a little bit hung up there, uh, but then I shut down everything and restarted and, and away I'm going here. So let's see how we do. Okay, it looks like I'm at the point where it's going to do the actual transferring. And I suspect this is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause again and uh, we'll pick it back up again later. Okay, it's uh, been several hours and it uh, appears as if I'm at a point now where I can start trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look here in Finder and see if uh, it looks like all my data files came down and all of that. So I should be in good shape. Uh, it looks like the um, uh, timeline that I used in, uh, you know, on that hard drive that I plugged in did the trick. So now the fun begins in trying to remember passwords and so on in order to get everything operational again. So it looks like I've met with some success, uh, even though it took several hours for the uh, time machine there to download all of my files. But we're here. Okay, this uh, version of the 27-inch iMac uh, came through with a standard 8 gigabyte of RAM. Now, uh, they still allow you to, uh, the user, to add additional RAM chips, and it's highly recommended because... If you buy the RAM from Apple, it's atrociously expensive. For example, I'm going to be adding 32 gigabyte of RAM. It cost me $120 for the chips, but Apple wants $400 for the same amount of stuff already installed. So I'm going to take care of putting the chips in myself. And the way you do it is the first thing you do is you make sure your computer is off and you unplug it. Okay, and over here behind where the uh, plug was, there's a button that you push that opens up the uh, little door that has the, the RAM modules in it. There, okay. So it opens up that little door, and then you just go in there and you pop this thing off. Okay, and then we have to pull these things apart. And once you pull that apart, it brings the tray down. And then we can just go and add the modules in there. So, let's see. I have two empty slots. So I'm just going to put the modules right in there. Got to make sure I add them in correctly. Okay, got one in. There we go. That appeared to be a lot harder than it really is. The uh, guys who do this a lot usually recommend that you lay it down flat and go from there. And of course, I was too lazy to take everything apart and do that. And there you have it. You can see that I started off originally with the uh, 8 gigabyte configuration. When I added in the uh, two 16 gigabyte chips, it brought my total up to 40. 
the uh, YouTube techies uh, did a lot of experimenting and uh, it looks like 40 gigabyte is the optimum amount. Anything more than that, the results are minimal as far as an increase in performance. So that's where I'm at and uh, going from here.